The Whitmore stakes provided the matchup scenario that allowed you to narrow down the field quickly, but how? It all starts here with the nine, Cogburn. Look, last time out, he was flashy. He looked very good, perfectly placed allowance race for the comeback since May of last year. Now, clearly a setup spot for this race, and I, I really think the speed of the speed, but standing in his way are going to be four other horses that need to get to the front to win. So let's start with his race. Last time out here at Oakland Park, 21 4 fifths seconds to the first call, 44 and 4 fifths to the second, and then let's go through the other early runners and see how they stack up to Cogburn. First, we have the four edge to edge. He's an easy toss on the fact that he's never won with a first call faster than 22 seconds. We know that Cogburn can run faster and beat him there, making him chase today, so he's going to be an easy toss for me. The five, Empire of Gold, he's a fast horse, but at this level, not so much. If you look back last April when he came here to Oakland Park, 21 3 fifths seconds, faded the whole way, doesn't really stack up against this field. The six, Baytown Bear, look at the race he won back here in November, gate to wire, 22 and 2 fifths seconds, much too slow to compete in here. He's another toss of early runner. Now, the eight, Pirate Rick, these Aqueduct runners, they're they're, I guess you could call them fool's gold. That's what, at least that's how I see them. If you go back to the three race win streaks starting on December 14th at Mountaineer, he's flashed a sub 22 second opening quarter and matched Cogburn's second call. He's going to be right there with him. He needs to get to the front as well. And if you see his beaten lengths at the first call, he's ahead by length. He needs to be out ahead by open lengths to win a race. He stepped up his last three races in grade three company and look what's happened. Speed and fade, even last time out, didn't even get the lead. Now that brings us back to the nine Cogburn. You have to give him credit for his race last time out. You know, I, I thought when he was challenged, he was going to fold, even held off the late runners. And that has to be credited to him. But the waters get deeper in here. Now, using that 21 and 4 fifth and 44 and 4 fifth first and second call line, I feel that's where we need to evaluate every runner. That's going to be coming off the pace in here today. And let's start with the pressers. And the one, Spankster. Last race is going to pop off the page for a lot of us. Same exact pace that we're looking at today. He made a nice move throughout the race into those fractions that we're projecting here today. Obviously, he has to be able to do it against stakes level quality horses now. But he certainly is in form. He's going to get the pace that he can overcome. His other sprint win back at Churchill was also against an honest pace as well. The three miles ahead, he's the trickiest horse in here to get a read on. If you excuse his last two races, he'd be shorter than that 15-1 to morning line, I think. Not much of an excuse for me, but he did come running down into Tejano Twist, who we'll touch on later, and you see who won that race, good night. Class level-wise, he's won non-graded stakes, but clearly looking to get a graded stakes win in here, and has a good running style to do so. The seven, Flash of Mischief. We see two races back that he won against OK Fractions. Now, the outlier of the past performances is that Remington Park race that he earned 110 speed figure. Look at the first and second call pace on Brisnet. Minus 2 and minus 7. Don't fall for that line. He needs a slow pace to win. He's not going to get it in here today. The Tim Morello, he's in the same boat. He's just too slow to win. The races he's won have been snail's pace, and he was an obvious choice in there. Shouldn't really be able to hang with this crew. The lone closer in here, the two, Tejano Twist, are 3 to 1 morning line favorite. He benefits from those sub 22 second opening quarters. He's also going to love seeing a 44 and 3 fifths or 4 fifths second call. Both we probably agree on him getting today. It stacks right up for him. So, of the off the pace runners that we have that have won against a sub 45 second second call, we see that one Spankster has, two Tejano Twist has, and the three Miles Ahead has. We know that the first call is going to be heavily contested with the four, five, six, eight, and nine. And I'm sticking to saying that the nine Cogburn is the best early speed. But the five Empire of Gold and eight Pirate Rick, who each are also capable of running a winning race at 21 four fifth seconds, they're going to be there too. They have to get to the front as well. So now we, we see that we're going to have visually three horses vying for first place here. With that early scramble up front, we can take a stand here against the speed runners and target the best off the pace runners. 
which we have identified. When you watch the race at the first call, we see Cogburn in first, and he has the four, eight, and six behind him, as well as the five chasing from further back. By the second call, the speed has eaten themselves up as we see Tejano Twist come flying and three miles ahead diving down the rail. Betting the race was easy as we know the favorite was a serious player and the two other horses at a price allowed us to play all sorts of horizontals, two horse win bets, or even King Tejano Twist on top in the exacta. Regardless, this was a scenario we could have picked up on easily just by looking at the positioning needed to win the race.